Hey everybody, it's me, Jessica, the Health Fitness Program Manager from Miter McLean. And today I'm gonna to lead you through your yin practice. I wanna make sure you have some time to grab some props for yourself. I'm gonna be using my yoga bolster, and I also have a block. If you don't have a yoga bolster, you can always just wrap some towels up. I mean, I don't really have a lot of blankets that the dog isn't using, but like here's an example of just starting to wrap a towel up to make something that you can support yourself with. And um, we're gonna meet on the floor in a kneeling position in just about five minutes. See you guys then. We got two more minutes till we get started. I encourage you though to put on some music that you like or turn the lights down low or off or light some incense or some candles, whatever it is that helps to get you in that nice zen relaxed state of mind. Breathing's gonna help, but set the space for yourself. Bird. All right, so I've got my bolster. I'm gonna use my yoga inversion stool instead of a chair. I got in some extra blocks for myself, just making sure that you guys also are gathering whatever else you might need to feel as supported in your practice as you can. We have one more minute till we get started. Welcome to another view of my apartment. Hello. 
fuck is being very needy today? Aren't you? Yes, we just went outside. It's very hot. It's very hot, I know. Can you sit on the couch though? I know you love the couch. Not so much. Okay, you can stay right there. All right, so we're gonna get started kneeling today. Welcome to in, you guys. If kneeling is not comfortable for you, think about already using your prop, maybe taking that folded up towel or your block or whatever you've got and sitting it right below your bum. Just to come into some sort of a kneeling position, whatever kneeling looks and feels like for you today. Start to ground your sit bones into whatever you found on the floor pulling your shoulders away from your ears. Find one spot to just focus your eyes. Focus your eyes and come into your breath. Really working to slow your breath down as much as possible. Remember, breathing out through your mouth can help create some extra heat and energy, but if you're already feeling warm enough, today's a great day to really focus on that nostril breathing. Long, slow, deep inhales in through your nose and equally slow exhales out through your nose. Start to really find some length through the crown of your head on your inhales, maybe a little bit more engagement of your chest, squeezing those shoulder blades together. Elbows might even pull towards the back of the room. Make sure your chin is neutral towards your chest, not stretching up too much towards the ceiling, not too deeply tucked either. And ideally, your toes are pointing right towards the wall behind you. Feel free to close your eyes. You can keep your eyes closed the whole practice. Just do the best to create the shapes that I described with your body, with your props today. If what you're doing doesn't look anything like what I'm doing, but you're feeling good, that's great. That's what we're going for. Just feeling good. Let's take some gentle stretches of our neck as you're ready. Use your exhale to drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. Just allow gravity to work here. Really work once again to draw those elbows back, opening up your chest, starting to find some engagement of your abdominal muscles, a little knitting of those rib cages together. Make sure you're not popping your chest out too much right here while you bring your right ear towards your right shoulder. Still working to find some length kind of through the back of your neck. Also space with your shoulders. Take a nice deep inhale and on your exhale go ahead drop your chin down towards your chest. Looking down towards your chest towards your knees. Still drawing your shoulder blades together and your elbows gently back, but once again, find a little engagement of your abdominal cord. Don't let that rib cage flare out. Think about knitting those ribs together. Go ahead, take one more nice deep inhale here. Keep that engagement of your abs. Draw your shoulders back and bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. Coming back to your breath. How deep of a stretch can you enjoy while still staying focused on your slow, relaxed breathing? That's the most important part. Just a couple more breaths right here. On your next exhale, once again, go ahead, tuck your chin down towards your chest. Once more, pulling those shoulder blades together, knitting your rib cage together, taking that little tuck of your pelvis, the rounding out of your lower back. Knees are pressed down gently into the floor. 
The tops of your toes can actively press down towards the mat. Awesome. Deep inhale. Exhale, lift yourself up off of your prop. Yay, and we're gonna use our, you can use the same prop that you just had if you, if you have blocks or nothing else, if you've created your own bolster for yourself. Move a little bit more towards the back of your mat. We're gonna go for a supported child's pose. So you can open your knees as wide as you want to and place your awesome prop down on the floor, whether it be your blocks. If you don't have blocks, come into child's pose. All right, we're just gonna lay our bellies down on our prop. You can find some comfort with your head wherever you want. If you decide to turn your head to one side, I'll let you know when we're halfway through so that you can turn your head in the other direction as well. And just start to relax here in child's pose. You, up to you to find the stretch that feels good in your shoulders today. So do you wanna be active and really reach those fingertips forward? Maybe even keeping a tenting of your fingers on the floor? Or do you just really wanna be passive here in the child's pose? Maybe you're focusing more today on bringing your hips back towards your heels as opposed to the big stretch forward in your upper body, creating a little bit more of a stretch of relaxation here in your lower back, a little stretch in the legs. All right, so coming to the first half of your stretch right here, back to your breath, back to your stillness. That's what we're really going for in our yin practice is finding as much stillness in the posture as you can. And we hang out here for a little bit longer than we would in some other classes to really create a deeper stretch and sensation in our fascia, ligaments, tissue, skin, even our bones. Dun, dun, dun. Really normal as we do some postures in yin for you to maybe notice some shaking or trembling. If you find that you've come into a posture that's too deep for you, that starts to get really uncomfortable and you can't hold it, just come out a little bit. And really focus on what in your body can you relax? Starting with your mind, relax your eyes, relaxing your breath, just completely releasing into the prop that you're using today. Can you start to deepen your breath here? Maybe even feeling the back of your ribs expanding all the way down to those lower ribs. Feel that breath come throughout your belly. If you've turned your head in one direction, use your inhale to lift your head up. On your exhale to gently relax your head down in the opposite direction. As you get here, since you moved, once again, scan your body and notice where you can relax and release your tension. Back to those big, deep breaths. Maybe you feel some stimulation or even gurgling happening in your belly right now, using this prop, gently pressing into our, our internal organs, creating some stimulation. Just about three or four super slow breaths from here.
gently begin to walk your hands back in. Press yourself back up to a seated position. You're gonna roll your shoulders out a little bit. We're gonna go for a belly down twist and we're still gonna use our props. So you might wanna push your prop forward or come a little bit more towards the back of your mat. Okay, so bring your knees to the side of your prop. You can even bring your glutes down towards the floor. So you have your right side ideally towards your prop right now and you're gently gonna relax down. So again, you're getting a little bit of pressing of this bolster or your pillows or, or your blanket into your belly to stimulate those internal organs and you're gonna relax yourself down towards your mat. It's up to you how much you wanna stretch your arms out towards the side to really start to stretch into your upper body. I'm gonna keep my forearms down on the mat with my elbows bent. And you can stay really passive here in the stretch by looking in the same direction that your knees are pointing. However, if you want a little bit of a deeper twist, you can go ahead and turn your opposite ear towards your prop. Maybe that prop is just the floor and that's totally okay. And just come into your stillness. Find the stretch that works for you today. The stretch that you can hang out in for the next three minutes. No need to go any deeper than where you started. Focus more on your stillness and your breath than anything else. If you do have your eyes open, just find that one spot to relax your eyes and relax your mind. If your eyes are moving, your mind is moving. If you find it's hard to really be in this stillness, start to count your breaths. Count the length of your breath and see if that helps to bring you a little more relaxation in your mind. Good job, everyone. Start to walk your hands in. Apply some pressure into your hands, palms. Press yourself up. Come on to your knees and switch to the opposite side. So dropping your opposite hip down onto your mat or the floor and then just folding forward, bringing your belly onto the bolster that you've created. And remember, our bodies are not the same on each side and they're not the same each day. So perhaps on this side, you care to take the deeper stretch of looking away from your knees. Or perhaps you would like to continue with a passive stretch of looking in the same direction as your knees. Just relax and release onto your prop if you're using one or the floor if it's there for you as much as possible. Because we've got three more minutes right here on this side. Go for it. If you're finding that you need a little bit more support, and I'm sorry I forgot to say it a minute ago, you can always take a prop and place a prop, an extra prop between your knees or below your knees. Remember, you want to be as comfortable here in the stretches that we're creating as possible. Maybe there's a little discomfort initially from the stretch, but there really shouldn't be any sort of pain. So many classes we don't get to use props to really be as relaxed as we can, but this is a restorative form of yoga where we're trying not to engage our muscles. We're relaxing our muscles. Just focusing on the deep stretch and stillness. If 
it can be hard not to fidget, right? If you notice that you're fidgeting, what can you focus on? Stare at one spot, count your breath, close your eyes and count some sheep. Great job, everyone. Great stillness. Once again, walk your hands in. Apply some pressure into your hands' palms as they get closer to your hips. Lift yourself up. And this time we're going to bring our props behind us, moving around a little bit in today's yin practice. Hello, helicopters. All right, so we're going to take a reclined bound angle. Uh, but we're going to use our bolster for some support. If you ha do happen to have an extra block or extra pillows that you can put underneath the top of your bolster such that your head will be lifted as opposed to down on the floor uh, at the same level as the rest of your body. Awesome. All right, so coming here into our supported find bound angle which is so good for increasing blood flow to the belly remember in bound angle you can keep your heels as close towards the center line of your body as feels good for you adjust your body here with your prop might feel a little weird and a little bit of a overarching so think about finding that gentle engagement of that rib cage of your belly support in the abdomen and kick those heels away. You can even use some more props underneath of your legs if you want to. I feel like a clown car of yoga props right now. <laughs> and just relax your arms down by your side. You can get a little bit more of a stretch of your chest the more that you bring your hands up in the direction of your shoulders or stay passive right here with your fingertips closer down towards your hips or your knees. Close your eyes. This is our longest posture so far. Five minutes right here. Well, child's pose is pretty long, but we turned our heads, so it was almost like two postures. So your real go right here, right now. Get those spilkies out. Shake it out if you need to for a second to come into your complete stillness. Pay no attention to me, checking the time. If you're not already trying some ujjayi breathing, you might find that 
to also be a relaxing sensation. You can add, it's a gentle constriction on the back of your throat that helps to create a nice, quiet, snoring sensation. Slowing down your inhale and also your exhale. You can even press your tongue to the top of your mouth to help create that sensation, almost like a silent ohm. know how hard it is to just stay still and frequently the desire to move around or not even noticing that you're starting to fidget is very normal and that's what this well today still meditation is all about on being able to relax your mind and focus on just one thing about creating that stillness inside of you Maybe even when you don't want to, or when things feel uncomfortable or awkward. And the real yoga practice isn't here on our mats, it's in the real world. When we take what we learn right here and apply it to the tense moments in our real lives. halfway through here. If you found yourself fidgeting, that's okay. It is just a practice. It's not perfect. But do your best to come back to your breath, to your stillness. You can always try again. And your best is always enough. you found yourself so still that you notice your heartbeat? Last three to four breaths. Take a little wiggle of those fingers, of those toes. Go ahead and bring the soles of your feet down to the floor. Even starting to windshield wipe your knees, bringing your hands, palms close to your lower back as you press yourself up. Yay, next up we have legs up the wall. If you want, you might even wanna use your uh, folded up towel or mat or your bolster under your back to lift your feet up on the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and not use a prop under my back for this one. I encourage you to scoot your butt all the way over to the wall and then lower yourself down one elbow at a time. As you get there, you can walk your feet up the wall. And if you need to, scoot yourself in a little bit closer if having your legs straight as I do is uncomfortable for you, feel free to take a slight bend in your knees and bring your feet to the floor. And just like before, if you wanna get a stretch of your pecs right here, go ahead and make some football stadium arms, palms facing up towards the ceiling. 
But if you don't watch that, if your chest is tired, feel free to bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. I lost everything. Okay. Still lost everything. And we're going to relax right here. Pay no attention to the girl on the floor. Legs up the wall is a great posture for you to unwind. With your feet up, the blood flow is draining down. It's so much easier on your heart. It's really helpful in relaxing. This is a great one to do before you go to bed or after you've been traveling. <laughs> can be really invigorating if you have tired legs and just calming on the nervous system. All right, so come into your stillness, into your breath right here, you guys. Start to notice the sounds that you can hear. First noticing the sounds that are close to you in the room. And then as your stillness goes on, really trying to listen to the furthest away sound that you can pick up. How still can you be right now? Remember, it's nervous to feel some shaking or maybe twitching or trembling. Just allow it to happen if you really need to. If it's uncomfortable, you can always just take a moment to bring your heels a little closer towards the floor, knees towards your chest, and then come back into the stretch. Can you make your breathing so quiet that you don't even hear yourself? Last three to four breaths right here. For our next posture, we're going to use that chair or stool or couch or whatever you have. So go ahead, walk those feet down the wall. And find your way with your bum close towards your stool. If your um, chair is really high up, you might want to place a couple of oopsie doodles, blankets or whatnot, once again under your back. So we're still just relaxing right here. Maybe your knees are a little further away from the center line of your body, as opposed to stacked right on top of your hips as we had a moment ago. A little bit of a tucking of your chin towards your chest to get as much of the back of your head and your neck flat on the floor as you can. 
knit that rib cage together. So no flaring open of the ribs and an extra arching of your back. And just relax right here. It takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. So what's happening with the corners of your mouth while we're hanging out on the floor right here? Can you gently pick them up? Sometimes even when we don't feel happy, just putting a smile on your face can really help to change your mood. So. Not that anybody doesn't feel happy, but just in case, try to look pleasant if you, if you can, if that feels or sounds good to you, like you're enjoying yourself right now. Last three to four breaths right here. Take a little wiggle of those fingers and those toes. Wake up your extremities. Walk your feet back in. We're going to come back to the wall. Next up, uh, I mean, yeah, we're going to come back to the wall. Uh, next up, we're going to go for some pigeon on the wall, which is pretty much a figure four stretch. Uh, the closer that you have your hips towards the wall, the more intense that this stretch is going to be. You can make it less intense by keeping the leg that you have not crossed a little higher up towards the ceiling or more intense by bringing it in. All right, but to get started, we're going to take our right leg and we're going to cross it over our left thigh. Make sure there's some space that you're not just like pressing on the, on the joint here. All right, and as you start to just... Uh, bring that left foot, left shin closer towards you. You'll start to feel a little bit more of a stretch on the right thigh. 
You can make it a little more intense by really drawing that heel further down the wall such that the outside of your left shin, your left calf muscles coming closer towards your face. If that's a little too much for you on the back of your leg, because we're going to hang out here for two more minutes from right now, then go ahead and send your left heel further up the wall. But if you can take a little bit of a deeper stretch, maybe even placing the sole of your left foot down on the mat, keeping that lower back Relaxed and released down on the floor. Chin tucked to chest. You got it, dude. Find your stillness right here. So just coming into as deep of a stretch that you can keep holding for these last two minutes. Last two breaths to come out of this one. We go that left foot further up the wall and then uncross your right from your left. You can even bob your knees or windshield wipe your whip, whips, your hips or feet, whatever, whatever feels good. And then with that right leg up towards the ceiling, you're going to cross your left leg. Just make sure there's some space. So make some circles with your ankle that you're not just pressing that ankle joint against your left leg. And then as you can, bring that heel down the wall. Remember, you can make this less intense by just bringing your hips further towards the top of your mat, or again, by stretching that right foot further up towards the ceiling. We got three full minutes in the posture. We got into the setup a little faster this time. Yay, so find where you can hang right now. We've only got two postures after this. So keep that stillness so you can lift those corners of your mouth again. Last two breaths. All right, slide that left leg up the wall. Uncross your left from your right. Go ahead, gently drop those knees and feet over towards the floor. We're gonna come onto our bellies 
For a Sphinx pose, just a little stretch of our backs, getting into those shoulders a little bit before we're gonna finish class today uh, with the side lying Savasana. So feel free to open those feet as wide as you want to. You're gonna bring your elbows underneath of your shoulders, palms facing down towards the floor. I'll turn sideways so that you can see me a little bit. But, uh, okay, there we go. Awesome. Remember here, we're in yin, so feel free to grab a prop again using your bolster or your yoga block or your towels or whatever to relax your head here. Focus on taking the tension out of your lower back, so with your exhale, melting that belly button down towards the floor. Focusing on creating a little bit of a a pressure of your elbows, forearms down into the floor. focusing on the stretch happening in your lower back. So make sure you continue to take that tension out of your glutes, really just relaxing and releasing your upper body as much as you can. Last three to four breaths right here. prop from in front of you. Take a moment to bring your head down towards the floor. Bend your knees and windshield wipe your feet. Really release any tension that built up in your lower back during that stretch. And then we're going to go ahead and roll over onto the right sides of our bodies coming into a nice recovery position for a side lying savasana. You can once again use your prop here. another emergency alert and how long has that been going and can you guys see me and I'm so sorry if you can't and I hope that you still can and then there's another one okay Shh. yay all right so we're laying on our sides and if you want you've got your prop here if you don't have a prop here think about bending your knees if you do have a prop maybe having your lower leg straight and your upper leg bent. Maybe you have both of your knees bent, but you're gonna stick a pillow or a prop either between your legs or underneath of your legs. Just find this side lying savasana that feels good for you today.
Feel free to stay here in this final savasana for as long as honors you. However, if you, like me, have other amazing things to move on to in your day, go ahead, take a moment, press yourself up. Let's come to a seated position, seated position of your choice so we can honor ourselves and close out our practice together. Yay, take a moment, go ahead, bring your hands to the center of your chest with your thumbs on your, touching your sternum in namaskar. And take a moment as you tuck your chin to your chest, close your eyes and honor yourself. Thank you. Thank you for filling your own personal cup so that you can pour out your awesome energy to others. If you guys have any questions or concerns about anything that we did today, please reach out, continue to think good thoughts, speak good words, do good deeds, eat good foods, nourish yourself from the inside and out. So thankful for you guys coming here today to share your energy, not just with me, but with each other. I can't wait to see you all again soon. Namaste.